We got big news, ladies and gentlemen, from business insider Jack Tejera, 21, arrested in connection with the Pentagon document leak, Attorney General Merrick Garland. The suspected Pentagon leaker was arrested Tuesday by federal agents in Dighton, Massachusetts. Merrick Garland identified the suspect as Jack Tejera, 21, a guardsman specializing in intelligence. Tejera allegedly shared highly classified documents about the Ukraine war online. So they're treating this guy like, you know, enemy number one, public enemy number one. But uh, there's, a, there's a few important things just to bring up right away as to why the story matters. One, the mainstream media lied. Two, Joe Biden lied. Three, it seems like Russia's actively winning the war. And four, actually, there are U.S. special forces on the ground. This is now confirmed. It's not speculation. And, uh, well, you know, everything you thought about the war, you've been lied to about. And I can just assume that anybody listening to the show is not surprised at all because, I don't know, been here, done that. Yeah, I mean, they've been on the ground since 2014. And this latest action by the Federal Bureau of Investigations and the DOJ going after this whistleblower, treating him like a terrorist, by the way, the, the way that they captured him, just, just, it's just absolutely crazy when this guy is coming forward, providing documents that, by the way, the corporate media was gaslighting us, telling us, we're real. Oh, they, the, these files don't exist. And they said, oh, no, they do exist. But this one portion about the number of Ukrainian dead troops is definitely manipulated here out of all those documents. And then they told us, oh, it was definitely the Russians that released this information. And today we found out that exactly was not true at all. And there's a lot of big things in these documents. They were out on Discord for a number of weeks. No one really paid attention to them. But now, after all the gaslighting, after all the propaganda, all the lies, it looks like these documents are legit and they do speak to a lot of the bigger things that are happening in Ukraine that we should have a real serious conversation about. Sorry, Ian, well, I cut you off. Oh, Senator Joe Manchin tweeted out, I don't know if you guys saw this, eight hours ago, in my lifetime, I've never seen the United States of America in a more just war. And it's a video. <laughs> and people are like, Congress didn't declare war, bro. Like, this right. guy's a senator, and he still from doesn't West understand. Virginia. That's, that's really concerning. Yeah, we're going to make sure he's not a senator for much longer. Granted, yep. he's got a few more years left. There's nothing we can do about that because you can't recall senators. But that guy's a scumbag. Yeah, I mean, we, we used to respect Daniel Ellsberg and the Pentagon Papers and muckrakers and whistleblowers in this country. And now we're doing the exact opposite of that with the Washington Post and the New York Times being accused here working with Bellingcat specifically hunting down this whistleblower. Just a few days ago, six days ago, Reuters was saying that according to anonymous U.S. officials, ever heard that one before? You hear it all the time when they try to tell you a bunch of lies. According to U.S. anonymous officials, Russia was behind this leak. Again, why are they continuing to lie? Why do we believe them? The only real way that we could get truth in this country is through whistleblowers. So for them to go after this guy so hard really shows you how they're trying to hide the bigger truths here. Because, you know, if people really knew what the government was doing, if, if everything was declassified, they would be pissed. And There's, people know that. And that's why they try to suppress this story as much well, as they did. That's true, too. But the big thing here is that in the documents, the reason the media comes out and says these documents appear to be real but may have been manipulated. That is to say that someone took real documents and altered the numbers. The reason why they had to lie is that the documents show that Russia's only suffered around 17,000 casualties, despite the fact the media has been reporting 200,000, and that Ukraine has suffered around 70,000, which is, now that we know who this guy is, now that we see that it's just some dude who got arrested, not a Russian, uh-oh, Looks like Russia's winning the war in Ukraine. We and also they keep have dumping more and more money into it, and we and and we are losing. Not that I want to be over there. And we have Kirby coming out telling the press not to cover it. Who's the, Kirby? The, uh, John Kirby. He's like a spokesperson. I mean, just a shocking clip. National security spokesperson. Yeah, yeah. that's the guy you're, you're talking about yes. here specifically he, coming out. Yeah, don't report on this. And again, the Pentagon <laughs> also said, said, don't do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Pentagon also sent notices to social media companies saying, don't do this. Elon Musk commented on this saying, you know, if there's one way uh, n not to bring attention to a story, this is not the way to do it. Uh, I'm paraphrasing. He didn't say it in the exact way. But but this is this is a big story and highlights a lot of Ukrainian young men that are dying, that are passing away. And I think we have to start asking the question, why? What is the goal here? What is the purpose here? What's really going on here? Why are we being told everything's peachy? Everything's, uh, the Russians are going to be defeated any moment now. You hear it on the television all the time. History repeats. Russia usually has a very bad way of starting wars. But 
Uh, the longer the wars continue, historically, the Russians have a huge amount of manpower that you, they throw into these wars and usually are more successful and are able to defeat their victories the longer a war goes on. So, so to, to, to one, prolong this conflict in the history, in the Afghanistan of Europe, that is Ukraine, is absolutely crazy in, in the first way, even if you are yeah. pro-Ukraine. But second of all, how many innocent young men, you're, de- you're, you're destroying an entire population of young men that are being butchered and slaughtered for what? The profit of, of, of the military? industrial well, complex I, I used to think that but uh you guys know about that that royal family that got all inbred i think they're called the habsburgs yeah. was that was that it the habsburgs you mean the the, the british royal family is that them is that no the, I, this is like a european royal family and they're all inbred yeah, I think and it's then the like, habsburg family was it the habsburg family you want well, to check most Spain. most royal yeah, families most are royal inbred, by well the no for sure for sure but uh it got me thinking as you're talking about this like why are we overseas and you know i thought about 1913 you know the start of the federal reserve some authoritarian, strong-minded individuals are, you know, meeting on Jekyll Island and they're like, we're going to create a centralized banking system. <laughs> and then, you know, they have kids who have kids who have kids. And then you had, you know, uh, Dr. Ron Paul on the show just come right out and say that there was a revolution when the government murdered its president, John F. Kennedy. And it's like, well, OK, then. And I'm just thinking about it. And I'm like, that's like the kid of the Federal Reserve people. And now what we're dealing with is like the Habsburg offspring, which is our current military industrial complex. Like they're too inbred and deformed to properly function in terms of international policy. So while China is basically taking over, while they're doing negotiations with Saudi Arabia and Brazil to get off the U.S. dollar, our Habsburg-esque military industrial complex is like, we must conquer Ukraine. It, and it, you're like, for what, dude? It is the Habsburgs. They're known for the distinctive Habsburg jaw. It's H-A-B-S. Habsburg. And they were, it's like, like if you look at pictures <laughs> of the Habsburg jaw, you'll see they were like inbred or known whatever. for being inbred. But, yeah. but th- these people aren't inbred. I think they know what they're doing because they always do it. And and it, it, when, when it comes to losing, when it comes to human sacrifice, these people don't care if the United States loses. These people don't care if Ukraine loses. Ukraine has been used by many corrupted politicians, by many internationalists, by many globalists. There's a reason BlackRock and Goldman Sachs has all the contracts right now in, in Ukraine. There's a, there, there's a reason. They, they don't care. They, look what happened in Libya. Look what happened in Afghanistan. Look what happened in Iraq. These wars aren't meant to be won. We have to think from the perspective of these people don't care about you. They don't care about the United States. They don't care about how we look to the rest of the world. They care about their contracts. They care about their money. They care about their blood sacrifice, which essentially they're doing here when we could have had peace. We could have had negotiations. We could have had this conflict ended last year in April. But no, the Western leaders got involved, flew into Ukraine, and specifically made sure that this conflict was prolonged, which is absolutely insane, which is absolutely crazy. And now there's U.S. Special Forces operating inside of Ukraine with mission critical functions. 14 U.S. troops. What are they doing exactly there? We don't know. 50 U.K. Special Forces, 15 French Special Forces, and 17 Latvian Special Forces. Over 100 U.S. personnel in Ukraine right now. And uh, as how we many, even... How many U- personnel? Uh, hundred, about 100 U.S. personnel in Ukraine right now. Wow. Those are the estimates according to these documents that came out there. And uh, e- even, you know, Donald Trump came out and said during the Syrian war, he killed a whole bunch of Russians because the Russians were fighting there. How many troops are we losing? Are we even going to be documenting? How many U.S. forces or U.S. soldiers? I mean, there's people who volunteer there, but officially this changes the game as well. Trump also, you know, responded to Tucker, essentially acknowledging that Nord Stream was perpetrated by us. He said it in a in a kind of. He alluded to he, it he in a def- very sneaky no, way. He said it. He was like, I don't want to make us look. He, Tucker asked him, who, who blew up the pipeline? He's like, well, I don't want to make our side look bad. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but it definitely wasn't the Russians. Uh, but, but again, Trump's also analysis of, of Putin and Xi and Kim uh, was also uh, pretty interesting. That interview was also the dynamics between Tucker and Trump. That's also something people are but, really looking into as well that, are, that was really eye-opening. But what does any of this have to do with my beer? <laughs> That's a good point, Tim. What yeah. does it? it you're, they might get a little more expensive. Maybe it'll get cheaper. Who's to you say? Know, we had Jesse Kelly on the show the other day, and he was mentioning that Bud Light, this story was the first time his neighbors actually asked him about politics. And, and the reason I bring that up is I'm just like, okay, so basically U.S. has personnel on the ground. We are actively at war with Russia without a declaration from Congress. We've dumped a hundred plus billion dollars into this. Russia wants to send nuclear weapons to Belarus. China is getting Brazil and other countries off the U.S. dollar. And uh, well, the U.S. empire is all coming crashing down or whatever it is you want to call it. And the only thing that animates people is 
Budweiser. What I think about this transparency concept, we, we talk a lot about transparency. It's a big part of minds and why the code is free and open source is because, you know, this guy, Jack, that this 21 year old that is arrested for, for leaking the documents, you actually talked about with Joe Rogan on, on his show. Mm -hmm. This was that, before his name came out. And, and yeah. it's like you, you posed a question, like if every piece of data was released, would it even be a good thing? Like it, it could very well just cause massive war. So. I don't know if it's always good to leak every doc, you know. No, not every document, but we need vastly more transparency than we have. I'm curious, how, how specific, did he go through any kind of like a legitimate whistleblower process for this? No, he just put him on Discord. He put him on Discord. So that's that, that's kind of asking I, for backlash. Yeah, but there's, there's no such thing as a legitimate whistleblower yeah. process. Well, I mean, there, 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 there's... There is. No, and no, there gets, is. And, and, then, and then they get ignored or shut down or told to shut up, just like no, William I'm, Binney has. Fair enough. No, yeah. no, I'm not saying that he should have like gone and asked permission. I'm saying that if you, you know, in terms of redacting names and, you know, in certain circumstances, Circumstances. There, there is like a due diligence process that can make sense to be a little bit careful. I, I, yes, I understand what you're saying. I, I feel like all of these platitudes are just comforts for those who want the rules for themselves. That is to say, if the United States does something like Barack Obama blows up a kid, who's going to hold them accountable? They get away with it. But if any other country does it, oh, you better believe they're going to come out and cite all of the rules and read every single one of them. So when I, when I, when I think, think of whistleblowers, they say, well, he should have gone through the process, right? The process by which he goes to a commanding officer and says, they're lying about this and this needs to go to the public. And they say, thank you for bringing this to our attention. Have a nice day. Yeah. The, the, the process and the rules are intended to stop people from telling the American people what's actually going on and how they're lying, cheating and stealing and destroying our country. No, it also true. tells the world. But I mean, go ahead. Oh, I mean, all the Russian people know now, too. That's part of the they problem. They knew, though. They knew, though. You think in Russia they really believed 200,000 soldiers had been killed? They lived no, there. No, but I don't think they knew that there were 100 American soldiers. Yes, the Russians actually came personnel? out with a very interesting statement when these documents first came out, calling it a PSYOP. So the Russians and the Russian, uh, I believe, Ministry of Defense a couple of days ago, as soon as these documents came out, said, we don't believe them. We think that they're, they're being deployed as a way of tricking us. So that was their initial response to all of this official. Officially by by, yeah. the, by the Russian government, but but also a lot of other things came out uh, from these documents, including how the United States wasn't just infiltrating and spying on the Russian government and the Russian military, but also the South Korean military, the Israeli uh, military, and the Israeli government as well. And there was uh, a lot of techniques. Uh, some people argue have been disclosed here. I don't know. I haven't seen that personally myself, but that's the argument we're seeing against some of these leaks being released. That uh, the number of spies, the number and techniques of how they infiltrate traded these institutions was also leaked. I haven't seen that yet, but that's some of the talking points that I'm seeing out there. This this could be a psyop. It, it, it's worth pointing out that he's only 21 years old. I mean, as whistleblowers come, Snowden was young and he was, what, 29? That he, this guy, Jack, would know that he's going to get done on the espionage act. He's thrown his life away and he's a kid. Yeah. That, that, is that not at all suspect how young he is? Like, is that, what, what's... The, Perhaps, or, or maybe not, young and reckless. Certainly reckless. Yeah. I, I wonder if it is a PSYOP because think about how perfect it would be if you want to get misinformation. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. A leaked document. Yeah. And then it might like basically what happens is when they when the media said some of the information may be altered, may be altered by the United States so that when it goes out. It's a psyop to manipulate and confuse the other countries that are involved in this. But, but it is interesting to see the corporate media's response here, because when Donald Trump was president of the United States, when there was leakers within his administration, they were cheered. They were celebrated. They were promoted. Their story many times was just reported without even question of verification sometimes. But now we have a leaker and then the Washington Post and the New York Times track it down with Bellicat track them down and hunt them down. Well, that, that's a big component of the story that mm. people have been pointing out that the mainstream media basically acted like an, 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 like an intelligence operation. Extension of the state. Yeah. Yep, for the state. That is, when the government was like, hey, who leaked this? All of the news outlets said, we're going to hunt this person down and figure out who it is. But when it came to Donald Trump's leakers, they were like, we must protect whistleblowers. Mm. That's the game being played today, man. Yeah, I mean, we need sweeping whistleblower protection reform. I think that, that, that that's a... A, a, a new type of legislation that just needs more focus. That's what we got with uh, the Arrow program, which is the All Domain Anomaly Research Office for UFO whistleblowers. So now in the NDAA, there's there's now specific protection. They're doing an audit of the whole government for for UFO related information. But 
the reason people weren't coming forward before is because they were they're terrified of coming forward. What was that thing you guys were talking about? Who was talking about this? That uh, Tucker Carlson said that whenever troops go like meet aliens or whatever, their brains melt or something T- like Tucker that. Tucker Carlson was on the Full Send <laughs> podcast and he described a situation where he was looking into a story where he was hearing of a bunch of U.S. personnel and U.S. soldiers that had interactions with aliens that had essentially their brains scrambled. Huh. Um, so, so again, I'm paraphrasing here from listening to Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson explains it a little bit better, but essentially describing how he has made contact with the people who have verified that there are other entities out there, and when they do get near human beings, they essentially destroy their mind. I would guess that it's more like that Cuban thing. Remember they were doing that like noise weapon oh, or low frequency? Yeah. That they're Havana doing, syndrome. Yeah, what something if that's like that. aliens? I think it's human. I think it's human technology, and they're just putting chimeric animals if they or or... You know, if they think they saw something that's not human, they might be right, but it could be like Wait, part you, human. You mean the people who think they saw aliens? Yeah, if they show them, if they're going to show somebody something and try and give them a red herring, they may be doing like genetic work on on animals and be like, look, it's from another planet. And, and then in the background, they've got like vorpal sound just messing with your DNA and the people are- I don't like, know about all that, I but remember. I will say, I think- if you believe the U.S. military and U.S. government is not doing genetic experimentation and hasn't been for the past hundred years, you are a crazy person. They, they, you, ever, you guys ever hear of the humanzy? No, I have. Humanzy, you, you, you know what that is, right? <laughs> yes. so, uh, I, I could Chimpy. guess the Russian, yeah. Russian yeah. humanzy. Yeah, Super, and so yeah. the the story is that uh, the Russians. Here's here's the crazy thing about the story. Chimps. So so you can't just hybridize two like species willy nilly. You have to actually figure out. Which which species has to be the female and which has to be the male? And I'll tell you the horrifying part about it. Human babies are big. Chimp babies are small. Chimps have smaller bodies. Humans have bigger bodies. So when they were doing these experiments, the urban legend tells that you can't take male parts and put it into a female chimp because the female chimp is too small. You got to put the male chimp stuff in the human female and the human female has to carry the chimp human hybrid. So urban legend is the Soviets actually forcefully took woman women and made them do this now i don't know about all that maybe my point is this yes the u.s government the chinese government they're all doing this stuff and there was a big story a couple of years ago china is trying to make super soldiers they are doing human genetic modification to make what was it ubermensch is that what it is yeah. like super superhumans yeah, ubermensch yeah superman yep that was the nazi plan i think was the ubermensch Yep. I so I, I look if you know I, I don't know whatever it is you're talking about Ian because we're talking about aliens we're talking about yeah. well, I don't know where all this scrambling came scrambling the brains with vibration like Havana syndrome. But I'm into it. We're so. in a race car, just just turning. The, uh, the uh, you made me think of the heart attack, the CIA heart attack gun, which we know exists. That that, that came out in, in the, the church, 70s in the church commission, church commission hearings. Yeah. So now no imagine what they that? have now. Right. Exactly. I, whenever so. ever I hear anything about alien anything, I am I immediately think it's human. How could this be? human technology there's there's so zero to no ev- evidence very little evidence of any uh, animal come from another planet there's well, none you know my favorite thing about ufo stories is they tend to take place near u.s military bases and experimental research facilities so there's like one story that was in the press and this one is blew my mind this story made it to the press it was like Naval pilot tells story of strange objects he sees in the sky. And then it's like in, the, in 2013, he was flying a routine mission. He brought the report to his supervisors who said, this is nothing and ignore it. And he was shocked. What if this was the Russians? What if it was the Chinese? How could they ignore this report? And I was just like, uh-huh, maybe it's because they know what it is and you don't. So shut your mouth. And then the best part was the the sighting was 100 miles out from a u.s experimental aircraft facility and i'm like so basically a dude with, with limited clearance is doing a routine exercise and sees some experimental aircraft reports it to his super commanding officer who's like yeah don't worry about it and then it's like oh, they're covering up aliens and it's like bro that's our base those are our weapons Shut up. Yeah, they have a technology called super cavitation. And what they do is they mount lasers on the front of an aircraft and then for- force them into each other and shoot this area in front of the aircraft, causing space time to cavitate and create a vacuum in front of the plane, which draws the plane forward and causes it not to create a sonic boom. It still makes noise, but it doesn't make the Is that boom. real? Yeah, super cavitation. What? Uh, this is according to Jeremy Riss, who was on Brett Weinstein's podcast talking about it. So there's technology like that. If you see real craft, that sounds like warp drive. 
it's it's definitely a start towards that because if you can evacuate space in front of you, you'll be pulled forward. That's a big part of, of warping only, through space. Well, I mean, this would that that would only work in an atmosphere. This is mostly the density you, of the atmosphere. Right, you're yeah. create, you're, you said warping space time. Uh, I don't know about all you're that. Right, you're right. You're right. You're talking you're about right. creating a vacuum in front of you, which causes it's warping the atmosphere. Pressure, yeah, yeah. Thank you for correcting you that. It. It's warping the atmosphere. They may yeah. have technology that warps space time. I don't know. Um, and then there's also the idea of talking plasma, which is where they focus lasers from a distance and they coordinate them. And where they triangulate, it creates like a, a ball of plasma that they can move around really fast, like a laser pointer. And they're probably doing it from space stations or Right, it's or basically satellites. just a three-dimensional laser pointer and we chase it around like a cat. And so there's both. And it'll confuse people. If they think they're the same thing, they're going to be very confused. Because there probably are actual craft that are able to move, to be pulled along. How did we start talking about aliens and stuff? Uh, did Bill, you bring it up? I probably am guilty. You, you, brought, up arrow, you brought up the Arrow <laughs> I'm all, program. I'm, were you, were yeah, you talking arrow. with Rogan about it or something? Yeah, well, we were talking about the the Arrow program, which is like a well-funded government program for researching ah. this now. Um, and then we, we also went deep into the Virginia, Brazil incident, but I don't know how deep you guys so want to go. What What's the it? incident? There's an amazing documentary that came out earlier this year called Moment of Contact by James Fox. Um, and it's basically Virginia, Brazil is basically the Roswell of Brazil. Yeah. So, you know, you go there and it's like huge UFO. St- it's like Virginia, 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 Virginia. I was like, wait, Virginia. Yeah. yeah it's, Virginia. It, it's similar for, huh. yeah, it's weird. Um, but hundreds of people throughout the city, uh, saw objects, actually these girls, saw beings apparently and the whole wing of the hospital had to get demolished because the smell from this thing apparently was so bad it infected the whole building and this is not like the mayor of the city currently is took james fox like all through the city the mayor of of virginia is like totally all in on it they have multiple when did it happen it happened in 96. Wow. So there's a lot of documentation and it, it it's it's either the biggest UFO story in history or the greatest hoax of all time. But like the the sheer number of people who saw the military checkpoints all over the like you guys got to watch the document. I'm not I, like let, let's do it. Let's let's go deep next time after you've all seen it because it is completely wild. I I was I suppose blown the, away. So so bringing it back, I guess if the question was the U.S. Re- the U.S. really does have this crazy advanced technology, why aren't they using it in Ukraine? Or why aren't they using it in general? Well, it's if, if we have it, it doesn't necessarily mean that we know how to use it. If, if, if there's any kind of rec- recovered materials. Well, no, I mean like the U.S. is developing weapons yeah, and stuff. Because these wars aren't meant to be won; they're meant to be prolonged. Um, oh, yeah, good and, point. and and when you continue the war, you of course have so much of a not only profit incentive but control incentive. You have to understand the the Ukrainian uh, country also controls a lot of the wheat that's exported all around the world. Russia also, would, when it's being hit with its sanctions, specifically controls a lot of energy around the world as well. So limiting the amount of energy, limiting the amount of food around the globe is something that a lot of these top globalists are really into and and love having that kind of position of power uh and 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 essentially i don't think they care if if ukraine wins or loses at the end of the day especially with how they're treating them especially with how they're prolonging this battle now there's a bunch of black projects there's a bunch of black budgets there's a reason trillions and trillions of dollars usually goes missing from the pentagon every few so years what are they spending that money on well probably more ways of destroying the world but they also know at the same time we use this latest kind of insane technological advancement, the Russians will probably use something as well, or the Chinese will use something as well. And they're also developing a lot of this kind of doomsday style technology. I mean, the Russians are openly talking about a Poseidon nuclear bomb that will send a tsunami of nuclear they waste towards, uh, well, they say they have it. The Russians say they have a lot of stuff. Doesn't mean they always do. They kind of also talked about how great their latest tanks were. And we really haven't seen them kind of highlight that in the battlefield that's happening in Ukraine. So again, a lot of this is also saber rattling. A lot of this is also just kind of posturing. So when we look at this larger perspective and picture, 
Um, it, it is a very uh, complex one, but, but when you really look at it, yes, there is technology that could kill us, whether it's artificial intelligence, whether it's tsunamis, whether it's nuclear bombs. Nuclear bombs are still just archaic, old, decades, uh, very, very ancient weapons compared to the latest technological advancement that they have now. Um, wh- what exactly do we have? What do they have? Who, who the hell knows? But it's scary and it's terrifying bet, that I we're bet. doing all this, including when we look at the realm of bioweapons that could be used here and genetic genetically specific weapons that could be used here, especially with so many governments harvesting people's uh, genetic codes and DNA code. Have you guys seen the uh, the video of the ship with the laser on it? They point they point the laser at the drone and the drone bursts into flames. Isn't it like an invisible laser? It's like well, a microwave yeah, infra- or something? It's infrared, I'm pretty sure. So uh, not microwave. I don't think that's, that's a laser. Uh, it's infrared. So it's this gigantic lens and it just points at the drone and the drone just bursts into flames and then crashes. That's how you beat drone swarms. What kind of or range? Or humans. What kind of range can it? I think it was like thousands of feet or some ridiculous. It was nuts. Wow. And I'm just wondering if they have that kind of stuff like they don't use it on people. Like imagine if they set that up around Ukraine. They, they built these big towers. I guess the issue was electricity. If the power is being cut. Yeah, because if you have a power source like fusion generator, in addition to that, you don't want to end the war. The military industrial complex maybe wants to prolong the war. You don't want to lose your most advanced piece of technology to the enemy just in case. If you have like one or two fusion powered high beam weaponry, you don't want to put it in Ukraine because if someone gets a hold of that. I don't think it's as simple as, you know, the we don't want to win the war. I think that there are major factions of the military industrial complex contractors and whatnot who have like a ton of financial interest in the war. But you know, a lot of people in the military, I think do want to. So there's, it's not black and white. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.